Hi, and welcome to the Camera Compendium. Today I'll be taking a look at the Argus A2F. The Argus A2F was manufactured from 1939 to 1941 by Argus Incorporated in Ann Arbor, Michigan. It belongs to the A series of Argus cameras, which are generally characterized as being snapshot cameras that accept 35mm film in 135 cassettes. The A2F is equipped with an uncoated 50mm f4.5 Argus Anastigmat lens, which is a cooked triplet design mounted in an Ilex Precise shutter with speeds of 1 25th, 1 50th, 1 100th, and 1 200th of a second, plus bulb and time modes. The diaphragm opens to f4.5 and stops down to f18, which is calibrated in the German geometric sequence, which was used on the Barnack Leicas from which the Argus A series drew inspiration from. The lens barrel has a focusing ring and it'll focus down to 18 inches or one and a quarter feet all the way to infinity, which is quite impressive even for today. And the lens barrel will actually collapse into the body to make it more pocketable. What's interesting about the Argus A2F is that there is no shutter release on the shutter can itself. A plunger is screwed into the cable release socket on the side of the shutter can and depressed when a picture is to be made. This one is unfortunately not an original. It is one that I made in my home machine shop. What may be surprising to folks nowadays is that this camera does in fact have a light meter. It works without batteries or any electricity for that matter. Uh, on top of the camera between the film advance knob and the viewfinder is the extinction meter. Inside this cutout here is a number of filters that are uh, neutral density filters that are calibrated to be one stop away from each other. And this cursor is pointed to the darkest illuminated one when the meter is pointed at the subject. Once that's done, the calculator on the top of the unit can be used to determine what setting of shutter speed and aperture can be used to take a properly exposed photo for the subject you pointed it at. To use the Argus A2F, you simply open the back of the camera by pressing down on the latch and lifting away. That's supposed to come all the way off. Pulling down on the rewind knob and placing in a fresh 135 cassette. This one's just a dummy because it's a demonstration. The film is pulled from the cassette and placed into the slot on the take-up spool and wound on for a few turns. Then the back can be placed back on, the latch depressed, and made sure that it latched in place. Now press the film release button and wind on two frames until it stops. Then rotate the film counter knob until it's zero. Now you're ready to take pictures with the A2F. To do this, uncollapse the lens by twisting it and pulling out to the full extent, focusing with the focusing knob with the index little mark there, setting the shutter speed using the rim set mechanism on the Ilex Precise shutter, and setting the aperture using either the scale on the front or on the top of the shutter. To take the picture, simply press down on the shutter release and you have the picture. After this is done, it is imperative that you press down on the button and wind on the film so you don't get a double exposure. There is no double exposure prevention on the A2F or any Argus A camera for that matter, except for the A2, A4, but that's a separate design. Once this is done, you can collapse the lens again by twisting and placing back, doing the reverse of taking it out and then you're ready to put it in your pocket and take another photo. So once you're done with this roll and it no longer wants to wind even when pressing the button, flip the camera over and twist the rewind knob in the direction of the arrow until the film is all back in the cassette. Then simply open up the back and replace the old roll of film with a new one to take more pictures. Lastly, there is a tripod socket on the bottom of the camera for standard quarter 20 tripod mounts. That's all there is to the Argus A2F. 
It's a lovely camera, it's fun to use, with a very good lens on it for its day, and it really was important because in, in the 1930s, the Argus A series was introduced into America, and it used what we'd now recognize as the standard 35mm format. The Argus A series was the instrumental camera in introducing the 35mm small, uh, small format to the American public. It used to be a European format until Argus brought it to the masses of America. So this really is a good piece of history. And with that, I'd like to thank you for listening, and I'll see you again on the Camera Compendium.